In this video, I'm going to show a demonstration of inbound and outbound integration between OpenFire, an open source chat server, and Elasticsearch. So I'm using a project that's available out on GitHub um, that integrates Hubbot with Elasticsearch. And the link to that project is in my blog post on ecmarchitect.com. What that script allows you to do is uh, talk to Elasticsearch from your chat um, client. So let's say I want to get the cluster health. Um, I can ask Hubbot to go out and ask my Elasticsearch cluster for its health stats. Um, you probably saw on the end of that I typed dev. That's an alias that um, the script keeps track of so that I could have multiple clusters set up and I don't have to type their URL endpoints, I could just use a nickname. So another example would be uh, if I want to talk to Elasticsearch and get some nodes information, the same information that you would get from the CAT API. So I can do that and it comes back and I can see that this particular node um, I only have one node running and it's a data node and it's the primary, uh, it's, it's the master node in my cluster. The other thing I wanted to do was to be able to have Elasticsearch uh, tell me if something is wrong. And so in order to do that, I'm using a, a paid add-on product from Elastic called Watcher. Watcher is used to do alerting and monitoring um, on Elasticsearch or really any HTTP endpoint. Um, so over here in um, my Atom editor, you can see how uh, a very simple watch is defined. So a watch involves uh, or is composed of a trigger, an input, a condition, and some zero or more actions. So for my trigger, what this does is sort of sets up your schedule for your watch. So I'm saying, okay, watcher, every 10 seconds I want you to do something. And my input um, is to do a search against Elasticsearch. So in this case, I'm saying, OK, I have an index called test and a type called generic. And I'm just going to grab everything back uh, from that. So just do a search and, and grab all the hits that come back. Your conditions can be as complex as you want to. You can have scripts uh, that are written in Groovy that invoke a lot of logic to determine whether or not um, you want to take action on this. I'm using a simple comparison. So I'm just saying, okay, so if there's five or more documents in the index, take an action. Okay, so here's my list of actions. I only have one, and it's a simple one. It's a webhook action. So um, that means that uh, if that condition evaluates to true, then Watcher is going to uh, reach out and invoke my webhook. It's going to, in this case, it's going to do a post against localhost port 8008, and it's looking for an endpoint called chat. Um, and then it's going to post a message to that, uh, to that endpoint. Now this endpoint is, is just a tiny, tiny uh, custom web app uh, that I wrote that what it's going to do is use the Smack API to talk to the OpenFire chat server and put the message in the chat room. So if we go over here and uh, look at my chat client, I'm using Adium. Uh, on the Mac, but OpenFire is uh, allows you to because it in, implements XMPP or Jabber. It allows you to use uh, any uh, XMPP client uh, that you might want to use. But I tend to use this one. So we can see in this chat room, um, I'm here obviously, and then we've got the bot that knows how to talk to Elasticsearch, and then we've got this um, other user who um, is here because the, um, um, the webhook endpoint has connected in via this user called alert. All right, so let's do something to cause this watch to uh, invoke an action. Um, if we go look at the number of um, documents in my test index, you can see I've got four documents right now. So that's not enough to, um, for the watch to invoke the action. Now every 10 seconds that uh, watcher is doing the search and then 
evaluating the condition. Um, but right now there's only four documents. So let's add a document to the uh, test index. And you can see right away up there in the chat window, um, the test index has five documents. So now it knows. Um, and it's going to repeat this every 10 seconds. Um, <clears throat> so there are different ways you can throttle the watches. Um, I'm using acknowledgement throttling. So what that means is that um, those actions, in this case the webhook, is going to continue to get invoked as long as that condition is true. Um, so what I want to do is tell it, hey, uh, you know, I got it. It's cool. Thanks for letting me know. So what I'm going to do is say Hubbot Elasticsearch Knowledge, and that particular um, watch is called Simple Search, and that's on my dev cluster. So when I do that, um, now that watch um, has been acknowledged, and so it will not uh, let me know about uh, about that condition, even though the condition condition continues to be true. Now, if I want to, I can come over here and uh, we can do a search, and I could grab one of those documents, and uh, we can do a delete against it. And now if we count the number of documents in the index, there's only four. So now everything is reset. If we were to add another document, which we can go ahead and do that, um, then the, uh, the condition will evaluate to true, and uh, the action will be invoked. So there it comes. And if I add another document, then the next time the alert triggers the action, we'll see a different message. There we go. So let me acknowledge this. This watcher acknowledgement piece is uh, just a slight tweak that I made on the, um, the Elasticsearch Hubbot project that's already out there. And I cover that in my blog post. So if you want to know how that works, it's really easy to do that. And uh, more to the point, it's easy to extend that script to do anything that you want to with Elasticsearch. So you could imagine um, doing all kinds of administrative tasks against your Elasticsearch cluster um, without ever leaving chat, which is kind of cool.